In this example, the plant's transfer function has four poles and two zeros, and we are again interested in determining the location of the poles of the closed loop transfer function as this control gain k goes from zero to infinity. Here we have two zeros and four poles, n equals to four, m equals to two, n minus m is equal to two. We have an excess of two poles more than zeros. Two of these poles will now have to go to infinity, whereas the other two poles will migrate to the zeros. These poles will go to infinity following asymptotes, and you can now determine the value of those asymptotes using the same formula again. Theta equals to 180 plus 360 q minus 1 divided by n minus m. Theta 1 is obtained when q equals to 1. And this is 180 plus 360 times 0, q equals to 1, divided by 2. This is positive 90 degrees. And theta 2 is obtained when q is equal to 2. That is 180 plus 360 times 1, divided by 2. That's 270 degrees, which is the same as negative 90 degrees. Let's now locate the poles and zeros on the S-plane. We're starting with zeros. We have a zero at negative two and a zero at positive two. Here is one of the zeros. And here is the second zero. And now let's place the poles. We have a pole at one. We have a pole at negative one. That one there, and we have a pole at 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, and another pole at negative 0 0.1. So four poles and two zeros. Where is the root locus? Now the root locus is always to the left of a not number of poles and zeros. Well, let's count them. We're starting from positive infinity. We go from positive infinity up to 2. The count here is 0. When you encounter 2, the count becomes 1 and remains 1 up to this pole here. Passing the pole, now the count becomes 2. We have passed 2 poles or zeros. When you reach negative 0 0.1, now the count becomes 3. And when you reach 0 0.5, the count becomes 4. And negative 1, this is 5. And past negative 2, the count now becomes 6. This should have been negative 2. Where are the odd numbers? We have 1 between 1 and 2, 1 between 0 0.5 and 0 0.1, and 1 between... 2, negative 2 and 1. We can now determine the root locus for some of them. Because there is a root locus between this pole and this zero, we can easily say that at this pole we have to migrate to the zero as k goes from zero to infinity. Same can be said here because we have two poles. These two poles will have to come together and go to infinity following the asymptotes that we calculated here. Let's come back to this one later. And now here we have another pole and zero pair, and we have a odd number of poles and zeros between them. We are to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros. So we know that the root locus exists here. So now this pole needs to go to the zero. And as k goes from zero to infinity, this pole migrates to negative two. We still have to deal with this case here because you have two poles. The two poles cannot go to each other. They will have to come together and break to infinity. They do that following these asymptotes. Now let's see where this asymptote is located at. This asymptote's centroid is calculated as the sum of poles minus the sum of zeros divided by n minus m. And this is sum of all poles, negative 1, negative 0 0.5, 
negative 0 0.1 plus 1. So this is all poles minus all zeros, negative 2 plus 2. And this is divided by n minus m, which is in this case 2. Alpha is negative 0 0.3. Alpha is the centroid of the asymptote, so it is around here, negative 0 0.3. This is where we have one asymptote going up at an angle of positive 90 degrees, and one asymptote going down at an angle of negative 90 degrees. So these poles will come together, break away to the imaginary axis, and go to plus minus infinity. And this is now the completed root locus. When k equals to 0, this pole is here, this pole is there, this pole is here, and this pole is there. When now k tends to infinity, this pole goes to that 0, these two poles come together, break to infinity, and this pole goes to the 0. What can you conclude from this analysis? Well, we can clearly say that because here we always have a pole on the right side of the S-plane, this system is always unstable regardless of the control value k. This suggests the need for a different controller. This is something you're going to see later on.